Hello, and welcome to the virtual Nordic and Baltic Oscar contender series presented by Scandinavia in New York, Scandinavian Film Festival of Los Angeles, and the Baltic Film Expo at SFFLA. The films presented in the series are those films chosen by their, their respective countries to compete for the Oscar nomination for the Best International Feature Film category. Today we are speaking with Maria Sordal, the film's writer and director, as well as actors Andrea Brain Hovig and Sans Garskar from the Norwegian film Hope. Moderating today's talk is Jim Kuning, the founder and director of the Scandinavian Film Festival of Los Angeles. Thank you. Uh, welcome and thank you for joining. Thank you. Welcome to our guests, Maria, Andrea, and Stellan. Uh, uh, Stellan Skarsgård, if there was a Mount Rushmore for Nordic actors, you'd be on it. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Because of my stony acting. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Uh, and it also feels like a little bit of a family affair. Uh, Maria, we've had your husband, uh, director Hans Peter Moland, at the festivals with several films. And we've had nearly the whole Skarsgård family at the festival for, for Stellan's son Billy's film, Simple Simon. Uh, Dad wasn't there because, of course, he was off shooting a movie. So Maria, you've given us hope, which is the Norwegian Oscar contender this year. And um, the hope you've given us, is, it's not a Disney kind of hope, it's a really grown up hope. And uh, with this film, you've returned from a nine year hiatus from filmmaking. Tell us how you came to the story and came to tell your story. Um, and there's no way uh, without, you know, doing it. It stood in its way in all matches because uh, uh, when um, the, um, I had a death diagnosis and uh, when this was uh, cancelled, death was cancelled, <laughs> I really wanted to uh, work again. And I tried to do everything else but this. But then again, this was the only thing I could do, tell the story. So it came about uh, trying to make something which was uh, personal as opposed to private. Um, because I think it's a universal story in many ways, although it's very, very personal. And, and it, you, tell a, you tell your story so beautifully and it's it's not sugar-coated, it's just very, very real. Uh, Andrea, your, your training began at the Norwegian National Academy of Theater. You've done a lot of things on stage as well as in film. And Stellan, you must have been born acting. You're one of the Nordic actors who is well known outside of, uh, of Nordic cinema with roles like uh, your role in the Hunt for Red October, Goodwill Hunting, Chernobyl, and of course, Breaking the Waves, which is from a Danish director, Lars von Trier, but is an English language film. I'm wondering if the two have ever worked, if you two have ever worked together before, and how did you, um, with Maria's help, how did you achieve the, the incredible intimacy in your portrayal of these these roles. I, I think it's I, I, that kind of intimacy is it, it seems like it's something that film can do, which is something that's not so easy to do on the stage. Mm. Yeah, that's true. It's um, I think it's especially in front of the camera, it's the chemistry is really important because it's really difficult to fake that kind of chemistry. Uh, on stage, is a bit, it, it's easier <laughs> um, <laughs> because it's so <laughs> far away. Um, but I really felt this spark with Stellan. Um, the first time I met him, we had a laugh and then I felt really safe afterwards. So um, I don't know what you will say, Stella, about this. But it, but it is, uh, 
I I really like that about film. That's uh, that's something absolutely unique. The the camera's ability to see what's going on behind the text, behind the blocking of the scene, what is actually going on between people, unconsciously even. Yeah. Um, Ingmar Bergman, who when when he was filming, he was always sitting right beside the camera, as close to the actors as possible to see what was going on in their faces, in their eyes and everything. And he said, it's, it's necessary. But he also said that then when I see the rushes, I see 10 times as much because the camera sees more. And the camera, yeah, sees, it, it's not only the sort of the conscious choices, the signals that you want to send to the, to the audience to explain what's going on in your character. It's all those little irrational things that that is real life, and 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 I think we had we had a, a very intimate working situation, you and I, uh, mm -hmm. and 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 I think it's reflected in the film. But it's very important that the director is a director who sees that and who takes care of that, because mm -hmm. uh, if you only cut to the person talking, then you lose all that. Yeah, and Maria, I agree. Maria is extremely sensitive and and uh, and has really captured all of that. I agree. Uh, the film in its, it, it, the film tells us in its own way about the, the perks of cancer. <laughs> and, and, I've never uh, heard that. Threatening illness. Perks like the deepening of relationships and love and um, maybe pushing aside unimportant things and getting mm -hmm. down to the important stuff. Um, I'm curious, Maria, how did you arrive at the closing scene of the film when Anya's going into surgery and you don't tell us the outcome? Um, in a way, I do tell you the outcome, <laughs> I believe, in a way, uh, because um, the story with its title, Hope, uh, which is a title which, in the, you know, uh, at the very beginning of the movie, it's very much probably for the audience related to will she survive or not. Um, well, as meanwhile, during telling the story and actually telling a portrait of a couple's long life together within a brief week, um, it turns out to be a love story. Um, strange one, though, but a love story. So I see the ending of the movie as the uh, end of how their love story works out. And that is a happy ending in that respect. And that's what the story is about. It's more than, you know, if she will survive or not. But um, as it happens to be my personal story, and as it happens that uh, the movie starts with the text of, this is my story, as I remember it, um, I guess audience will, you know, probably <laughs> know that I'm a survivor. Well, that that's wonderful, and of course, you you don't leave us without hope at the end. You lead us with hope, and as you've said, it's a it's a love story, and really, the outcome wouldn't wouldn't change the depth of that love. Um, either way. <laughs> That's a nice thing to say. I know what you mean. You know, I found it very interesting that you used real doctors in the film. Uh, what led to that decision? And I'm wondering if they were easy to direct and work with. <laughs> um, what led to it, it was that I have spent like uh, years and years of uh, of watching doctors and, you know, being so much at hospital. Uh, and um, I think, uh, firstly, it's because I'm so uh, fascinated by their lives. You know, when you meet so many doctors and you realize, you know, before they meet you, uh, they've had their personal lives going, you know, they've had breakfast or they've just been divorced or whatever, and they're going to deliver um, really bad diagnosis too, you know, and you were the eighth person that day. Yeah. And I think, uh, and you see so many characters and I'm so fascinated by them. And they are not, um, 
they're not like filled with empathy all the way through, you know, uh, they're, you know, they have a bad day, they have a good day. And I think actors often, uh, if it's not like uh, main characters who are able to, you know, fulfill the role, I think they tend to uh, be too, too empathetic. Very interesting. Which is, which is not, uh, you know, it's not really believable. So to, to really uh, find, um, you know, true characters, uh, this was it. And I also think uh, uh, we, find, we found together with uh, professional actors, with Stelvin and Andrea, that it was uh, refreshing and uh, that they really stand up and uh, they were the unprofessionals, you know, when it came to the scenes, <laughs> they were the professionals. And uh, yeah, so yeah. It was really interesting that uh, there was this uh, brilliant surgeon who had been a surgeon his whole life and he was all of a sudden very nervous because he had never been in front of the camera before. And that created some kind of total fresh energy that I've, I've never experienced before. And, and so I could just let go of my uh, anxiety and nerves because um, I, it's difficult to explain but it, it happened something in the in those really tiny hospital rooms that I will never ever forget um, which uh, yes I, I love every one of those in white coats I think they are brilliant and they were so generous and uh, Yes, they they brought something to the film that I really, really enjoy. Also watching as an audience, I really enjoy it. And interesting that they were nervous. And yeah. yet, yet um, the operating room is often referred to as the operating theater. Yeah, that's true. I haven't thought about that. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. We've had, we've had uh, over the years in the festival, we've actually had another director, the Finnish director, Aku Lohimies, had a life-threatening cancer. And oh. it was interesting to see his films before that and then, then, then after that. Hmm. Is your approach to filmmaking, Maria, any different um, after your your adventure with brain cancer than before? Uh, maybe not as sharp as before, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're very sharp, uh, so. You know, um, I think, uh, of course, life changes in many ways, you know, because everything becomes more, everything becomes more fragile. At the same time, I think, um, I, as you know, lots of other people who are survivors, uh, you you can't walk around and be uh, gr and grateful, you know, <laughs> 24 or seven. Uh, so um, in a strange way, everything becomes very, very no normal. And then suddenly in, in moments, things change. And I'm not gonna make a second cancer movie now. Uh, I don't know if I will intend what? it. What? <laughs> what? Uh, but it, it changes you, but I wouldn't be the right person to say how. And um, right now I would like to make uh, something which is a more of a political story and not a very, very personal story. So, yeah. Political stories can be very similar to cancer. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I, I More have, but a satirical I, political story. <laughs> I have a question that gets asked to me a lot. I've had this experience of being at uh, film festivals in in uh, Norway, uh, in Haugesund, for instance, and it sounds like a, a Dane, a Swede, and 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 a Norwegian walk into a bar, but a Dane, a Swede, and a Norwegian get in a conversation after a screening, 
and they both start, they all start talking to each other. And um, all of a sudden the Dane isn't quite speaking Danish and the Swede has changed the Swedish and the Norwegian has changed the Norwegian a little bit. Uh, so people have asked me about language. We have, we have a, um, a noted Swedish actor uh, starring in, in a starring role in a, a Norwegian film. Tell us about these Nordic languages and, and uh, are you just fluent in Norwegian or do you, uh, do you yeah. have to work on that? Well, uh, I think uh, Anya is uh, fluent in Norwegian. I'm not, I'm not very good at Norwegian, <laughs> but thankfully my, 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 uh, I pronounce Swedish so well that she understands what I'm saying. Uh, they are very similar, the languages. Uh, yeah. The hardest to understand is Danish, but that is not, it's basically the same as Norwegian in, in writing, but they speak down in the throat, so it's very hard to understand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yes, uh, it's Danish really uh, on this film, for instance, so it's, it's a very Scandinavian production, but we work a lot together over the borders in Scandinavia. Yeah. And, uh, and we more and more accept that some characters speak uh, another Nordic language. I mean, I mean, all the films I've done in Norway with Hans Petter, for instance, I think the Norwegians, the Norwegian audience, they think I'm Norwegian, but I have a speech <laughs> impediment. No, we don't. Oh, yes. We do. don't think you're Norwegian. No, we think you're Swedish. I'm so That'd sorry to break this to you. Uh, that would be the first time a Norwegian has claimed a Swede and vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in this, uh, this crazy time of COVID, which you're experiencing in Europe as well as, as, as what we're experiencing here, uh, are there new projects? Are you working on any projects or able to work on projects now? Uh, I am actually well, I'm, I'm reading scripts, uh, but I'm also working at the National Theatre in, in very small groups and uh, on Teams and Zoom, and uh, it's very strange. I don't know how it will all come together, but I am kind of working in a theatre right now. Kind of. Yeah. Well, we're all missing being in the theatre, in the movie theatres, yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, I agree. TV series. Uh, what, but uh, Maria, are you uh, planning anything now? You, you said a political film. What is that? Um, not to talk about it too loudly, but it's with Danes. <laughs> Danish. Yeah. It's with Danes. Yeah. You know, I used to, I used to live in Denmark, and uh, I'm familiar with that, almost more than Swedes. It, except from you, of course. You're used to me. Um, but but you did went to film school in Copenhagen, didn't you? Yes, and uh, I have been working with, uh, I have a Danish DP uh, who's Chilean, actually, uh, Alberto Manuel Claro, um, whom I will probably work again together with. And then I've also been working with. Uh, uh, production designer, etc. From uh, so, but I hopeful I hopefully it will be a Scandinavian co-production. Um, yeah, and that's and that's a good thing, you know, which we have been talking about earlier with uh, you know uh, working with actors from the different countries. Uh, but there is a different, I, you know, there is a difference between Norwegian, uh, Danish, and Swedish. Uh, we can work together like this, but there is, in my mind, there's differences, you know, apart from the language. It's oh, cultural yeah. differences. Yeah, and, um, after having lived in Denmark for five years, I know. Uh, uh, it's, and we have to use that uh, for something because we are not the same. We have different stories, uh, history, etc. Yeah. A, a lot of um, uniqueness with each of the countries, but a lot of cross fertilization as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I have a question for you. 
since you're married to a director and you're a director, does he direct you at home and you direct him? Or do you kind of argue it out and come to a consensus? How is that? Takes all, takes all, you know, we do everything. <laughs> we don't, we, we both, uh, we collaborate a lot in the sense that we read each other's stuff and discuss a lot. So, I mean, he's my very best friend and my very best colleague. Um, at the same time, we, you know, we can never work together because we're two directors. So, and we also compete, uh, strangely enough, you know, at festivals or whatever. Um, so it's a very awkward situation. <laughs> you trust each other's responses. So yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, and, and, and we also, I mean, we, we mostly make quite different kind of movies. So it's, um, yeah, so although we, you know, compete, we seldom compete within the same genre or, you know. Another question for Stellan. I'm just curious if anyone has or will present a script that uses your whole family together. <laughs> I don't know, but it's, it's, it has to be a big budget one then because there's so many. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, no, uh, not really. I mean, there are some projects. We, we have a couple of projects that we've been talking about where some of us are involved, uh, some of the kids, but uh, it's, it's not a, it's, it's fun working with a child or, or someone you know very well because there's, you, you have shortcuts to, every, to understanding. Uh, and you 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 have the same references, which makes it easier in some ways. But it's not a by itself uh, something to strive for. I mean, it's uh, we we pick what we want to do at the moment, and it's different in different moments, and we might be in different phases of our lives all the time. So still, it hasn't uh, shown up that script and that director. Yeah. Well. Your 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 family and the word dynasty go together, though. <laughs> for for sure, people have people really need in in this strange time. People really need hope, and you've given it to us through your story. Of what hope is all about? It's not always just the it's not always the expected. Sometimes it's the un unexpected. And um, we wish you all the best with this wonderful film. And already we're looking forward to the next film from Maria and the next films from Andrea and Stellan. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Beautiful, beautiful work.